Samarium neodymium dating is useful for determining the age relationships of rocks and meteorites, based on radioactive decay of a long-lived samarium isotope to a radiogenic neodymium isotope. ND isotope ratios are used to provide information on the source of igneous melts as well as to provide age data. The various reservoirs within the solid Earth will have different values of initial 143 ND, 144 ND ratios, especially with reference to the mantle. The usefulness of EDM ND dating is the fact that these two elements are rare Earths. They are thus, theoretically, not particularly susceptible to partitioning during melting of silicate rocks. The fractionation effects of crystallization of felsic minerals changes the edm nd ratio of the resultant materials. This, in turn, influences the 143ND, 144ND ratios within growth of radiogenic 143ND. The mantle is assumed to have undergone chondritic evolution, and thus deviations in initial 143ND, 144ND ratios can provide information as to when a particular rock or reservoir was separated from the mantle within the Earth's past. In many cases, EDMND and RBC near isotope data are used together. EDMND radiometric dating. Samarium has five naturally occurring isotopes and neodymium has seven. The two elements are joined in a parent-daughter relationship by the alpha decay of 147 EDM to 143 ND with a half-life of 1.06 times 10 even years. 146 EDM is an almost extinct nuclide which decays via alpha emission to produce 142nd with a half-life of 1.08 times 108 years. 146 EDM is itself produced by the decay of 150 GD via alpha decay with a half-life of 1.79 times 106 years. An isochron is calculated normally. As with RBC near and PBPB isotope geochemistry, the initial 143ND-144ND ratio of the isotope system provides important information on crustal formation and the isotopic evolution of the solar system. EDM and ND geochemistry the concentration of EDM and ND in silicate minerals increase with the order in which they crystallize from a magma according to Bowen's reaction. Series. Samarium is accommodated more easily into mafic minerals. So a mafic rock which crystallizes mafic minerals will concentrate neodymium in the melt phase faster relative to samarium. Thus, as a melt undergoes fractional crystallization from a mafic to a more felsic composition, the abundance of EDM and ND changes, as does the ratio between EDM and ND. Thus, ultramafis rocks have high EDM and low ND and therefore high EDM ND ratios. Felsic rocks have low concentrations of EDM and high ND and therefore low EDM ND ratios EDM and 3.59 ppm ND versus 4.65 ppm EDM and 21.6 ppm ND in real light. The importance of this process is apparent in modeling the age of continental crust formation, the Chur model, through the analysis of isotopic compositions of neodymium. Depolo and Wasserberg discovered that terrestrial igneous rocks closely followed the chondritic uniform reservoir line. Chondritic meteorites are thought to represent the earliest material that formed in the solar system before planets formed. They have relatively homogeneous trace element signatures and therefore their isotopic evolution can model the evolution of the whole solar system and of the bulk Earth. After plotting the ages and initial 143 ND-144 ND ratios of terrestrial igneous rocks on a ND evolution versus time diagram, Depolo and Wasserberg determined that Archean rocks had initial ND isotope ratios very similar to that defined by the Chur evolution line. Epsilon notation since 143 ND-144 ND departures from the Chur evolution line are very small. 
Depolo and Wasserberg argued that it would be useful to create a form of notation that described 143 nd, 144 nd in terms of their deviations from the Chur evolution line. This is called the epsilon notation whereby one epsilon unit represents a one part per 10,000 deviation from the Chur composition. Algebraically, epsilon units can be defined by the equation. Since epsilon units are larger and therefore a more tangible representation of the initial nd isotope ratio, by using these instead of the initial isotopic ratios, it is easier to comprehend and therefore compare initial ratios of crust with different ages. In addition, epsilon units will normalize the initial ratios to Chur, thus eliminating any effects caused by various analytical mass fractionation correction methods applied. ND model ages since Chur defines initial ratios of continental rocks through time, it was deduced that measurements of 143 ND, 144 ND and 147 EDM, 144 ND, with the use of Chur, could produce model ages for the segregation from the mantle of the melt which formed any crustal rock. This has been termed T Chur. In order for a TCHUR age to be calculated, fractionation between ND and M would have to have occurred during magma extraction from the mantle to produce a continental rock. This fractionation would then cause a deviation between the crustal and mantle isotopic evolution lines. The intersection between these two evolution lines then indicates the crustal formation age. The TCHUR age is defined by the following equation. The TCHUR age of a rock can yield a formation age for the crust as a whole if the sample has not suffered disturbance after its formation. Since ZM ND are rare earth elements. Their characteristic immobility enables their ratios to resist partitioning during metamorphism and melting of silicate rocks. This therefore allows for crustal formation ages to be calculated, despite any metamorphism the sample has undergone. The depleted mantle model Despite the good fit of Archean plutons to the Chur ND isotope evolution line, Depolo and Wasserberg observed that the majority of young oceanic volcanics lay plus 7 to plus 12 units above the Chur line. This led to the realization that Archean continental igneous rocks that plotted within the era of the Chur line could instead lie on a depleted mantle evolution line characterized by increasing EDM, ND and 143 ND, 144 ND ratios over time. To further analyze this gap between the Archean Chur data and the young volcanic samples, a study was conducted on the Proterozoic metamorphic basement of the Colorado Front Ranges. The initial 143 ND, 144 ND ratios of the samples analyzed are plotted on a ND versus time diagram shown in the figure. Depolo fitted a quadratic curve to the Idaho Springs and average ND for the modern oceanic island dark data, thus representing the neodymium isotope evolution of a depleted reservoir. The composition of the depleted reservoir relative to the Chur evolution line at time t is given by the equation nd equals 0.25 t23 t plus 8.5 edm nd model ages calculated using this curve are denoted as tdm ages. Depolo argued that these TDM model ages would yield a more accurate age for crustal formation ages than TCHUR model ages, for example an anomalously low TCHUR model age of 0.8 BYR from McCulloch and Wasserberg's Grenville composite was revised to a TDM age of 1.3 BYR, typical for juvenile crust formation during the Grenville orogeny.